Hello, and welcome to this episode of Extension Ed Talks on Next Tech Local One. Preserving food from a time of plenty for a time of need is an ancient art that humans have been doing for millennia. Home canning is one form of food preservation with historic roots that's regaining modern popularity. But if it's not done properly, canning mistakes can be dangerous or even deadly. I'm Linda Beach. I'm the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. Today, I'd like to share some important information with you from K-State Research and Extension to help make your home canning efforts safe and delicious for your family. You know, home canning is not just for grandma anymore. It's a creative kitchen technique that's regaining popularity with young homemakers and for several good reasons. For example, home canning lets you enjoy local food year round. And that's important to a lot of people to have a food that's local. It helps you preserve that food at its peak of ripeness and flavor. And it can save money over commercially canned food if you don't count your labor. And finally, home canned foods have that great homemade taste that we all can appreciate. Well, you know, there's more to safe food preservation than just getting the lid to seal. So I hope by the time we're uh, done spending our time together today, you'll understand why I say just because the lid seals doesn't mean it's safe. There are some other important factors that we need to ensure to make sure that we've got food that is safe for our family to consume. Well, home canning preserves food in a couple of different ways. First, it stops the growth of microorganisms, both the kind that um, spoil and decay the food, as well as those pathogens that are the kind of microorganisms that make people sick. Home canning also preserves food by stopping the enzymes. And those are, are um, components within the food itself that um, create changes in flavor, texture, color, and nutrition as the food matures or once it's cut. So um, what we're planning with home food preservation is to control those things. Safe food preservation begins with understanding the type of food that we're going to be canning. And we roughly divide our food into two different categories. Foods that are high in natural acid and foods that are low acid foods. Now that's important because high acid foods do not promote the growth of botulism bacteria. That's the bacteria that causes the botulism disease in people, and it's a neurotoxin, so it can be very dangerous and very hazardous uh, if, if that happens to occur inside a jar. Now those low acid foods, and I'm talking about things like vegetables and meats, they do create an, or offer an environment in which botulism bacteria can survive and thrive. So we need to handle low acid foods very differently then we would handle high acid foods for home canning. Well, a part of that involves the temperature that it takes to control the spoilage organisms that we're worried about in home canning. For high acid foods, all we need to do is get that food hot enough to reach boiling water temperatures. So 212 degrees at sea level or slightly less as we go up in altitude. However, the botulism bacteria creates a heat resistant spore as it reproduces and multiplies in a food. And we've got to take the temperature even higher than boiling water temperatures to ensure that we can destroy that heat resistant bacterial spore. So with um, low acid vegetables, we're aiming for a temperature of at least 240 degrees to accomplish that preservation step. Since we're talking about two different types of food that need two different endpoint temperatures, it makes sense that we need two different kinds of canning equipment to accomplish the food preservation that we need to do. The first um, canning equipment that we need is called a boiling water bath canner. And it's just what it says. It's a container that lets food be completely surrounded by boiling water. Now it's never gonna get any hotter than that 212 degrees. 
So here I have three examples of bo different boiling water bath canners. And they're really a very simple technology. All they are is a deep pot um, with a lid. And the pot needs to be large enough to include some kind of a rack to keep the jars off the bottom of the canner. That way they're completely surrounded by that boiling water. And then there needs to be enough room for the jar to sit on that rack to be covered by one inch of boiling water. And then we want a little extra space to allow for the boiling action um, and not let that boiling water splash over in the canning process. These are pretty low tech uh, pieces of equipment and so they're the least expensive and it's a really great way for people to begin with home food preservation. All it takes is a deep kettle, the old porcelain lined um, uh, canners for example, um, or even a more high tech uh, or a more modern version that stainless steel with a glass lid so I don't have to lift the lid to peek in and see if it's still um, doing its thing with the boiling water. Now I've showed you a rack that comes with the canner but you can also use a cooling rack like this. It comes from the housewares department. Just something that will keep those jars raised up above the base of the canner. Now for low acid vegetables that need to reach those higher temperatures, we're going to use pressure canning. And it's required for safety when we're canning vegetables, meat products like any kind of red meat, poultry, seafood, wild game, and combination foods like soups or stews, meat, uh, spaghetti sauce with meat, or even chili, things that combine those low acid foods together. It's required for safety, so you must either buy or borrow a pressure canner if you want to can these kinds of foods. When we're doing pressure canning, this actually is a more highly engineered piece of equipment where the lid locks on to hold the steam inside and those jars are surrounded by hot steam rather than boiling water. That lets us take the temperature even higher. Well, the first step in doing pressure canning is to lock on the lid and let the steam start to rise out of this vent pipe for 10 minutes before we put the weight on. That's called exhausting the canner. It ensures that it's completely filled with hot steam and there aren't any pockets of dry air in there that will change the condition. Um, as you uh, do the canning, you watch the needle in the dial gauge that's here on this canner to identify the pressure that you're reaching. And when you're done, you let this canner cool down of its own accord. So what about some of those old canners? The things you see at garage sales and auctions or maybe on the shelf in grandma's basement. Well, before you decide that those are a bargain that you want to try to use for home canning, check and make sure that they're not warped. See if you can still get replacement parts. And frankly, anything older than about 1970, it's very difficult to get parts for. And also, you really do need a manual with that canner so you know how to use it. So in other words, those old canners may not be the bargain that we're thinking about. This um, piece of equipment is only as safe as the dial is accurate. So it's recommended that we test this canner gauge at least once every year. And that's because this needle is a moving part that moves in that dial. A little bit of rust, a little bit of um, hard water mineral, those kinds of things might get lodged in there and make this become inaccurate and not work well. So we do have at most county extension offices in the state this simple canner gauge tester which allows me to shoot pressurized air directly up into the canner gauge and compare it with the master gauge on the testing unit to make sure that that um, canner is working properly for you. Well, you know, there are several other unsafe methods of canning that I just quickly want to mention. Things that I would really ask you to avoid. For example, steam canners are not recommended um, generally for anything other than some fruit products um, and in times that are less than 40, uh, 45 minutes. And we don't want to do canning in the oven, in the microwave, in the dishwasher, in a slow cooker, in the sun, 
or certainly aspirin and canning powders don't have any preservative qualities either. So as you're thinking about safe home canning, I want you to be sure that you're using equipment that's appropriate for the job and that you know you can trust. Well, when we come back, we'll talk about some of the jars that we need to use for home canning and the other utensils and gadgets and accessories that can make your home canning job easier. Please join me. Make a difficult choice an easy one with Cedar View Assisted Living's knowledgeable and caring staff. Your loved one will be professionally taken care of as they transition into their new community. With movies, holiday parties, planned exercises and games, residents will have opportunities every day to enjoy their time at Cedar View. Multiple room styles are available, ensuring a just right fit for your loved one. Come see Cedar View Assisted Living for yourself next to Sternberg Museum. The care you need, the home you want. Come on down to Bees Bargains at Smith Center, Kansas. We got the deals. We have a wide variety of inventory like soap, toiletries, toys, mini fridges, even kitchen tables. Everything is new at Bees Bargains, but it's all half the price. Yes, half price. That isn't just a good deal, that's a great deal. And with new items daily, our inventory is constantly changing. That means new, great deals are coming in by the truckload weekly. Bees Bargains at Smith Center. If you can't find a deal here, you can't find one anywhere. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Welcome back to this episode of Extension Ed Talks. I'm Linda Beach, the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. And today we're talking about the equipment that we need for safe and delicious home canning. Well, we talked about canners earlier. Now let's talk about jars. And what we need to be sure we're using are standard canning jars that are made specifically for home canning. They're heat tempered to, uh, to withstand the heat that we want to reach. They come in a whole variety of sizes. I've got things, everything from a four ounce jar up here to um, pint jars, which are 16 ounces. They make 24 ounce jars and clear up to half gallon, or quarts as well, clear up to half gallons too. But um, mainly, you need to kind of choose the jar based on the kind of food you're going to be canning. You'll notice that there are two different widths of the opening on these jars. Um, most of the time, this standard mouth is just fine, but if you've got large peach halves or, or whole apple slices, you know, that you're going to leave in rings, sometimes we need those larger sizes. I've also got my blue jar here to remind me to tell you that we really recommend the clear glass jars for home canning. Mainly because with a color jar, you really can't tell if there are some abnormal color changes going on during storage. And certainly it makes it harder to see the food through the jar. If you plan to enter home canning at a county fair, better not use the colored jars. We want clear jars only. Lids for home canning, we want the standard two-piece lid. Um, it's got a reusable ring that connects around the top mouth of the jar with a flat lid, usually has a sealing compound around the edge, and that's what um, seals the jar. Now while the rings are reusable, these flats are one trip only, so we need to replenish new flat lids for every canning, uh, every canning job. You can buy them separately in small boxes that are only the lids, or you can also buy them with the lids and rings together if you need to purchase them that way. And certainly new jars do come with the lids uh, and um, rings in place. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of additional equipment and gadgets and products and accessories that you can use to enhance your home canning if you want to do that. I've got lots of different things. 
couple of things I think are really important. Some others are just nice to be able to use. First of all, one of the things that's pretty critical is a jar lifter, which lets you reach down into a hot canner to be able to take out a hot jar. No sense using um, uh, awkward um, pot holders or oven mitts to be able to do that when they make these great appliances. This little um, item has a magnet on the end and we use it to grab these lids out of simmering water where we've pre-treated them before canning. This is a great thing that saves burned fingers as well. Another thing that's really helpful is a funnel to help you fill the jar without having a mess out around the edge of the jar as you're uh, filling it. These are designed to just exactly fit a canning jar and they're really handy. There are some other things that are nice but not critical. Um, for example, this helps me measure headspace to ensure that I've got the jars full enough or not over full. And uh, both of these other items can be used to release trapped bubbles that might have gotten trapped in that food inside the jar as we were filling it. Um, I've also got other products that can be really helpful. If you're going to be doing home canning of um, jams and jellies, there are a lot of different pectin products on the market. Canning salt is specifically designed for home canning foods. Um, regular table salt has some anti-caking agents that can make it look um, uh, uh, cloudy in the bottom of the jar. Um, if you're doing canned tomatoes, they do make citric acid, which is important for safety. We'll talk about that in our next segment. Um, and then I've got some other things that are nice to have. For example, I've got a cherry pitter that I really enjoy being able to use, a food mill, and this is a larger crank style strainer, which can be used to help separate seeds out of the food we're trying to can. And finally out front is an immersion blender, which, um, man, sure makes quick work of making smooth sauces in a hot boiling kettle of, say what, barbecue sauce, tomato sauce, those sorts of things. Well, we've reviewed the equipment that we need. We've talked about some of these accessory items and utensils that we need for home canning. When we come back, we're gonna talk about choosing reliable, home canning recipes that you know you can trust for safe food preservation. Please join me. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. Hi. We're looking for insurance. Oh, let's see who's free. Jerry? When insurance agents work for only one company, Michael. their options are simply limited. But a Trusted Choice Independent Agent is free to shop many companies for a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Let us shop for you. Contact Rogers & Associate to learn more. Western Auction & Real Estate LLC is ready to travel to you. Their team includes auctioneers and real estate specialists that will exceed your expectations. They offer experience in agriculture real estate, commercial and residential sales, and farm equipment auctions. Plus, they conveniently travel to your location, and it doesn't stop there. Visit westernauctionandrealestate.com today to shop their online equipment auctions, too. For professionalism from concept to completion, it's Western Auction and Real Estate. Well, welcome back to Extension Ed Talks. I'm Linda Beach, the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. So far, we've talked about the equipment that we need for safe home canning and some of the utensils and accessories that make the, product or the process easier. Well, now let's talk about the recipes and the resources that we use to accomplish that home canning and use the equipment that we've talked about. The first and most important thing I want you to remember is that you need to use reliable, tested 
research-based recipes uh, for doing home canning. So that means a couple of things. First of all, it means that we don't want you to make up your own recipes for home canning. That could be something like putting together your favorite ingredients for a salsa of your own creation and then trying to figure out how to can it. But you're also changing the recipe or making up your own version if you substitute ingredients or make changes to a standard recipe from the way it's written. So we want you to follow recipes that you know are reliable, that are based in science, and I want you to follow them exactly. Also, beware of those canning recipes that you find on internet sharing sites. You know the ones I mean, the ones where anyone in the world can post anything they want without any verification that it's safe. Well, we really want you to avoid recipes where you can't verify the source. You know, even something so simple as a typographical error on one of those shared recipes can create lots of problems. Now there are some very reliable websites that I'll show you in just a moment, um, but if it's a sharing site and a recipe from an individual, I encourage you to beware. And finally, it's time to update your old-fashioned recipes and canning methods. So that means maybe you need to replace your canning books or those resource pamphlets that you use uh, to make sure that they're up to date. USDA went through and retested all of the canning recommendations in 1994, so anything that's older than that is something that's now time to be replaced with a more updated version so that we know we've got the modern um, recipes and the modern techniques that are safe. You know, the same thing goes with old-fashioned cookbooks or those community cookbooks that have, you know, so-and-so's favorite recipe in the back. If those have been around very long, we also don't want to use those either. Well, so what are some of those reliable resources that we can trust? Well, first of all, um, canning resources from any state's cooperative extension service are resources that you can trust. Here in Kansas, we have a whole series of canning um, bulletins that are written for the kinds of foods that Kansans preserve most often. You can find these at no charge at your local county extension office, and they're also available online on the K-State Research and Extension website. The National Center for Home Food Preservation is based at the University of Georgia, and they're the ones who did all of the retesting for the USDA recipes. So the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning is the standard when it comes to food preservation instructions. Um, you can find this also online uh, as well. Now the National Center for Home Food Preservation in Georgia has also published a canning book called So Easy to Preserve, which has great reliable information in it as well. Um, and finally, the Jardin Home Brands Company, which uh, manufactures Ball and Kerr and Bernardin brand canning products, also has a great reputation for doing lab testing to ensure that their recipes are reliable. So I've got several items here from the Ball Company. The Ball Blue Book is um, an inexpensive way to get started in home canning. You can find these in grocery stores, uh, discount stores, hardware stores. Some of their other books are a little more in depth and they've got some really great and creative things that we know are reliable to use. Well, you know, high quality home canning should do several things. It should remove the oxygen from the jars, destroy any microorganisms that were in or on the food, inactivate those food enzymes that we talked about earlier, and maintain that jar vacuum seal so that it can safely sit on the shelf until you're ready to use it. One of the important factors that's reflected in these modern updated canning resources is the need to adjust our canning procedures for the altitude of residence where we're doing our canning. You may remember that as we go up in elevation, the boiling point of, of water actually goes down. So to compensate for that difference, at higher elevations we either need to do longer boiling water bath canning or um, higher pressure uh, settings on our pressure canners. Processing time varies with every recipe 
every food, every style of pack, every jar size. So it's important that we're using those resources that give us accurate information that's been tested for every recipe in every size of jar that's there. Too little processing means that that food may not be safe, it might spoil. Too much processing um, unnecessarily overcooks the food that we're canning. Just a note about tomatoes. You know, as things change, sometimes our foods that we're preserving do too. And tomatoes were borderline acid to begin with. There are some varieties that are even, even lower in acid and need to have some acid added into the jar to ensure safety in home canning. And we wanna use this um, bottled citric acid for canning tomatoes, whether we're doing it in a boiling water bath canner or in a pressure canner. Just a word about salt. Salt in vegetables, it's only there for flavor. It's not providing any preservative action. So if you need to cut down on the salt in your canned goods, you can do that as well. When you're storing your um, preserved foods, check for the seal and take that screw ring off the jar so that it won't rust while it's in storage. While it's being stored, now and then check in on your stored food and look for signs of spoilage, changes in color, streaming bubbles, some of those kinds of things that indicate spoilage. And as always, when in doubt, throw it out. Well, if you need more information about home canning and home food preservation, contact your local K-State Research and Extension office for these publications that I mentioned or for answers to your home canning questions. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Extension Ed Talks from Next Tech Local One. I'm Linda Beach, the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences.